everybody, Josh the RV Nerd of Vicious RV here with a Vibe 26RK. This is s something people don't realize about Vibe. It's actually kind of like a cousin of the Salem Wildwood family. It's an extended member of that family. But like I said, it's a cousin, not a brother, sister, not a clone. If you look at this thing, you can see some of the similar DNA like in the floor plan and a couple of the features. But where Vibe finds its own little identity is uh, they've, they've kind of elevated a few things that I, I think you're really going to like here. So it has that six foot nine taller ceiling, which opens up a lot of space. And we're looking at one today with the optional 50 amp service and second air conditioner that are both available on these, which are nice features. Now your standard air is a 15,000 BTU, but again, you can add on a second air conditioner, which, you know, well, I mean, it is quite literally a cool <laughs> feature. You've also got standard holding tank heaters here and an enclosed uh, heated underbelly for some nice extended season camping but what they've done here is given this a big chunk of uh, solid surface kitchen countertop and prep space really good storage but also awesome campsite views and visibility and one of the things that I love about this floor plan because it's a classic it's like a crocodile it, this floor plan has been around for a long long time and it's probably never gonna change because it, it just gets the job done now it's not for everybody but it gives you awesome window coverage but this year they gave you the ability to turn your dining into a desk if you are so inclined because it can easily quickly rotate 90 degrees with no real wrestling required. Um, the RV doesn't necessarily provide the best, most direct view of the entertainment center, but not everybody's going camping just to watch TV all the day. Some people like a rectangular shower that's a little bit taller. The extra bonus closet in that front bedroom, albeit a short camp queen, though there is room for a true queen in there, and a bunch of other things. Let me know what you like about this one, what you dislike, and I'll try to show you the good, bad, ugly with everything in between as we go today. Now, like I said when we really began, I mean, there's... It's not that this is an original floor plan. It's a completely unoriginal floor plan. But that doesn't mean that it's a bad floor plan. Like, I, I, I seem to kind of get that gist from people that vibe sometimes... Well, no pun intended. That was truly no pun intended. Um, that people sort of go, well, somebody else made this layout first. That means that this brand's a bunch of hacks. Well, it might just, you know, there's more than one brand that builds SUVs and somebody built SUVs first. Maybe somebody else just wanted to build a good SUV. I don't know. But what does Vibe bring to the table? Well, they're very good about being pet friendly, keeping vents and, and everything out of the floor. This is not like an Arctic Four Seasons kind of camper, but it has some solid extended season capability. The decor feels very um, on trend with a lot of residential uh, trend sort of things right now. And it is the kind of decor, it's neutral upon neutral upon neutral. But it's also the sort of thing that very quickly comes to life if you bring like some pillows or blankets or something in here. Six foot nine, a little bit taller ceiling and a very respectable lighting package make it feel light, bright and open. Your standard centralized air conditioner is a 15,000 BTU U unit. Uh, U, 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 U unit. Yeah, okay. Obviously, I don't script my material and I don't edit my dialogue very much because, you know, a lot of that stuff gets left in there. We're just going to do it live, I guess, like Bill O'Reilly or something. But um, these all also have the opportunity to be outfitted 50 amp with second air prep or... Um, with an actual second air conditioner installed on top of that, which is what we're looking at today. Now, this floor plan, what it does here is it gives us maximized prep space. And uh, I've never had somebody trade in an RV because it had too much counter space and too much storage. Uh, but, you know, this one is certainly trying to uh, take that. Now, if you notice over here, this floor plan is big enough. It maintains the full propane oven, but that is also a convection air fryer microwave up top. I will tell you, though, um, like the kitchen, I haven't closed the slide in road mode. I highly suspect we're going to lose the pantry and the refrigerator just because I've seen this show before. But there's a dead pocket of space back here where you see that those empty blank panels where if you were to punch those out, basically, like Mike Tyson, uh, you would actually have some kind of storage back there, but it would be kind of difficult to reach. I actually wish they would have just left it open, even though it would have been awkward. I prefer awkward storage over wasted storage, but again, it's probably just a couple staples in your imagination holding that thing in place. It probably wouldn't be that difficult. Ooh, okay, Keep an eye on this later in road mode. That converter is located in a place that I suspect when the slide closes, it's going to block your converter fuse panel. And that can be a little bit of a trick. Like if you pop a fuse on that cable slide system 
uh, while the slide's closed, it can be not fun trying to tackle that. Now, I'm getting you at this weird angle here so you can see under the top of the kitchen cabinets, you do have two sets of power outlets, one to the right and one to the left of that big breeze window right there. But you've also got that big massive chunk of sunshine glaring stabbing me in the eyes solid surface counter material uh, material right there framing in that nice big uh farm sink now that sprayer faucet is in a location such that uh if your partner is um well if they're just being rude and unsavory you can tell them to cool their jets and then spray them down <laughs> Now, that is a giant 50-inch 12-volt TV, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, one of the things here that's also kind of cool is that TV's on a bit of a pivoting swing arm. However, once again, trying to tell you good with the bad, something you need to do is put like a reminder sticker or something on the slide-out button on the RV. Because if you have the TV swung out, it can actually get in front of the slide. And then if the slide starts closing, it could smash that TV. I learned that lesson one time. Uh, many, many years ago, and I vowed never to repeat that mistake. Because something I believe, people make mistakes. That's just human nature. The first time you do it, it's a mistake. The second time you do it, it's a choice, and I choose not to make that mistake again. Um, all of your windows open for airflow. That's something that wasn't the case in previous years on Vibe. The big panoramic viewing window on the left, that did not used to open for airflow. So they are now providing max airflow windows. And although this RV does maintain a lot of window coverage over on the slide side of the RV or the poop side of the camper, it does also maintain that giant picture window and kitchen window on the camp side uh, of the RV. Now, I wanna dive into this dining here and, and then into a bunch of deeper details, but real quick first, there are some power outlets and USB plugs down here, and where that is going to be uh, really handy, I do have to, to bump you over in the world of wide-angle lens view just slightly, but first of all, you see those easy up-down Roman uh, blinds really blocking out some sun, but this table can also be a desk, and one of the reasons that I like that is last year, Vibe had a booth dinette standard, and... It was one of the areas that I criticized them because it felt thin and it felt flimsy. And I felt like if a bigger person leaned back in that dinette, they were going to break it and go backside over tea kettle. And that's not quite the experience that I think anybody wants to have. So I think that this, first of all, eliminates that potential and that challenge. And secondly, adds additional function to this RV that was not there before. I do want you to understand though, that when you move it over into desk mode, it does still feel a little bit wiggly. It's not the most stable setup that I've ever seen before. It's not terrible, but it's something I think you should be aware of. And I think that there might be some easy kind of DIY solutions. You know, like when you're at like a, a restaurant and the table, like wobbles a little bit, so you shove a napkin under it. I think you could basically do something stupid like that to really bulk and firm this up. I feel like it should have been done from the factory. I'm not trying to, to discredit that, but I also don't think it's going to be really hard to sort of contend with. But that's my two cents. Your money is on the line. I think you should come see one of these in person and actually sit down at that thing and touch it in person to decide whether you agree or not. That's my best recommendation I can give you. Now, um, that was one of those uh, almost 11 cubic foot, 12 volt compressor fridges, uh, by the way. And these used to have a 100 watt solar package and they called it the Camp Anywhere package, which I think was a little bit aggressive. They're now calling it the Remote Package and it's a 200 watt package with a 30 amp controller, which means you can expand on it. So overall, not too terrible. I also, I tell you what, as I get older, I am learning more and more to appreciate just the simplicity of light switches and not necessarily having to go touch screen Bluetooth digital uh, on everything, but that's just me. And I was just going to pull 180 and uh, flip over into the bathroom, but I thought you would kind of just like a, uh, a quick little shot like that so that you could get a feel for how everything flows together. One of the other things I think is kind of cool is you do have a dedicated hallway light, and the switch for that is, again, just right here, right in front of the door. So you can leave the lights off when you come into the camper and flick that on real quick. And if you're like me, you ever just like tap your phone screen to wake it up and then use kind of just like the phone screen light a little bit to see where you're going? That's probably what I would do right there. Or you can flick it off and save some power. Tankless on-demand water heater, uh, controllers over there next to the mirror, and that is just a mirror glued on the wall. But if you look over on the left there, you can see that you have basically your medicine cabinet 
and a little bit of linen storage built right in there. Little storage pocket down there below the sink with a big door, but again, you also have maybe some linen space over here on the right. So um, overall, I think this is a pretty effective bathroom. I think they put the, uh, the, the roller for the butt napkins in a decent spot, although some people... Uh, maybe if you got like, you know, a shoulder problem might have difficulty reaching over there. So, um, you know, maybe one of those free floating kind of uh, toilet paper roller stands might be in order for you. And you're obviously seeing how that is a, uh, a rectangular shower, not a radius shower. And with this having a six foot nine ceiling um, with my hat on, I just fit without my head in the skylight. Uh, without my hat, uh, it's a little bit easier with my Somehow I managed to pull off male pandered baldness and a bad hair day simultaneously. You know, it's it's a gift. It's a natural gift, I, I guess you could say. This is something I will tell you. And this is just my opinion. I would love to hear your opinion on this. And I'm not an authority. If I don't like something, that doesn't mean it's a bad thing. It's just a thing that I don't personally like. I don't dislike pivot doors. I don't think this is the proper place for it. Because it means that that bedroom is always a little bit tighter to get into. I just, I, I think had that been a sliding door or just a traditional swing out door like the bathroom, I personally probably would have liked it. And it probably would have cost less if it was just a cheap swinging door hardware, you know. Now, easy reach kind of uh, like reading lights right there under the bed. But kind of like the rest of the RV, you do just have a single switch to flick on all the lights here. And as I mentioned, these are available as 50 amp optionally. They're available with the factory installed second air optionally. That is a direct dump air conditioner though. Uh, so it, it is not a centralized air unit that'll help feed through the entire RV. Now, something I want to mention, this is a short queen. This is a camp queen. And I'm going to show you in a second, there's room for a true queen. But it looks even shorter because they put this gigantic decorative like lean back headboard buffer thing over here which is not fixed to the rv which can easily be moved if you are so inclined um but it, it makes it makes everything look and feel a little bit small now as i mentioned this is a short queen bed but as you can see there is good room around it and they did maintain uh keeping the uh floor vents out of the rv even up in here up in here and then getting that mattress out of the way, you see that they've got a really cool kind of like in in and out, sort of like you got the wicker basket kind of storage solution here. And they have good storage over the bed, but it, it's not like strutted or anything. So that's kind of one of those things that you're going to sort of have to uh, consider and contend with. Um, it's not terrible. It's just, eh, it's okay. And by the way, I, I was able to sit up in that bed without clocking myself. I just didn't feel like recording myself taking another headbanger concussion today like I've done in the past. But you might notice, like, I'm going to pivot you over this direction. It's got only a single hanging wardrobe tower, and the other side is wide open. It's asymmetrical, so that if you are um, claustrophobic, you can sleep on one side of the bed that feels a little more open, but you've got hanging storage over there because you have an extra big closet over here. And it's kind of cool from the factory. They actually include like one of those little like hanging wardrobe shoe shelf organizer jobs that you might get from like amazon.com or something like that. TV hookup straight across from the bed. And actually I'm at a really bad angle to showcase this. So I'm gonna see if I can uh, RV yoga twist my way over here to show that you do have a full breeze through window here uh, in the bedroom. And it even maintains those same Roman shades that you had uh, back in the living room area. And speaking of which, with the hallway over here, bedroom and bathroom nap and crap access is absolutely not a concern on this one. What I'm wondering is, I, and I'm pretty sure we're going to lose it, what, what can we do with the kitchen? Well, I mean, it's not as bad as I thought, but it's still not great. And by the way, if you appreciate that we take the time uh, to close the slides to show you, again, the good with the bad, like pointing out things like, yep, that converter is covered. That's a point of concern. We've lost the pantry. We've lost the fridge. You could sideways travel trailer two-step and get over there, get to the sink and some of your cabinetry, but that's all you're really going to have for road mode access back here. Remember up front though, you do have your bedroom and bathroom. I've always said that rear kitchens are better used at a destination versus traveling, and, I, and this is one of the main uh, reasons why. I feel like I started one sentence and then finished another right there.
Now, what it takes to tow this one, uh, the answer is going to maybe vary a little bit, uh, kind of depending on who you talk to. So, um, you know, when you look at just the weight of the RV, it kind of reads as fairly half ton towable. But when you factor in the length, tip to tail, tongue to bumper, it's a little over 33 foot long. That's an awful long sailboat to be hanging behind a half ton. So if you're gonna go short distance through flatlands without major elevation changes in zones with very little wind, you'd be okay with a heavy half ton. You wanna go cross country, through the mountains, through windy plains, you're gonna want a three quarter. They're just for sure, you know, is kind of how I feel about that. Now they give it a very nice front pass through compartment because this not being a Murphy bed up front, they really had the opportunity to maximize the use of all this. But one of my favorite parts here is not just like that aluminum skeleton worker, that enclosed docking center that we're going to see on the other side, but that pegboard right there. And the way that that allows you to like organize different things and you know, like if you want a place to be able to, to hang water hoses, electrical cables, little stuff like that, it can be really super handy. So you see the power stabilizers there. It's also got power awning and tongue jack. The underbelly does some things that you can't see. It is obviously enclosed. It is forced air heated. And these do have holding tank heaters factory standard on them as well. And what do you think of the general look of this? I, overall, aesthetically, I ain't mad at it. I think it's got a pretty good look myself. More of a linear kind of graphic package than the Nike Adidas swooshes that were very, very popular in the RV industry for a long time. Now the, the power awning feels like maybe it could have been a little bit bigger, a little closer to that front bedroom window. But the thing is, remember 33 and a half foot long total tip to tail is a lot of sidewall. That's not a crappy awning. That's not a real small awning. Although they practically put the speakers on the roof. I'm sure the neighbors are gonna appreciate that. Speaking of the roof, again, uh, optional second air conditioner and just peeking up over the awning, dead in the middle of the screen, you see that little silver line. That is your factory standard 200 watt solar package peeking up there. Now these are also paired up with a 30 amp charge controller. What all this means in English, if you're not familiar with all that, like I'm not a solar expert, I know enough to get myself in trouble. Basically, it is a very nice battery tender. It is not gonna live off grid and, um, you know, like power the air conditioner kind of solar. It's not that at all. Helping with offset some of the length of the RV though is that wide stance stability axle system. It will basically make the RV tow and feel as though it were a little bit shorter. And if you talk to uh, uh, professional transport drivers, a lot of them really like that system because it takes a lot of the strain and the bucking and chucking off of their truck. So they're pretty happy about that. Little mini camp kitchen here and a lot of manufacturers will put your stove top or griddle or something directly below that so you can burn your forearms well, what they have here is kind of similar to Surveyor, where it's just the little dog dish flip out sink. And what slides out is your cooktop. That's a uh, induction burner cooktop right there. Um, one of the cool things about induction, within seconds after you uh, turn the power off to that thing, it's cool to the touch. So this being more of a couple's model, maybe that's less of an issue, but if you are going to have some little kid guests or something for the weekend, it is nice to, in case they feel like walking over and grabbing something because kids do things that defy, you know, any and all logic sometimes. You may notice this is a cable slide system. Sometimes people ask me because they're not sure exactly what to look for. So hopefully it helps pointing that out. Um, and the roof is fully walkable. I think I flashed on screen. If not, I, I forgot and I meant to that it is prepped and ready for a telescopic removable ladder. But one of the other things I want to show you here as I walk around again, trying to show you the good with the bad with everything in between is this is a two headed sewer monster with the kitchen in the back all the way back there and quite a bit of sidewall length between them. Uh, they did need to put two separate sewer hookups on it. And that is a 60,000 BTU tankless on demand water heater. If a manufacturer doesn't publish the BTUs on their water heater, either A, they don't know anything about their own product, which is scary for a few reasons, or more likely they're not using a big, more powerful on demand water heater. I've seen some uh, 30, 40,000 BTU, which isn't terrible. And what that will generally let somebody accomplish is, you know, like one person using uh, kitchen water or one person using uh, the shower. The bigger 60,000 BTU will let a little more simultaneous function take place. So if one of you is taking a shower while the other one's getting dinner ready, everyone should have hot water available to them. 
So once again, thanks for tuning in. Um, I will leave you links to the video description to check for pricing and availability on one of these. Uh, and if you like the floor plan, but maybe the way vibe doesn't, isn't necessarily your thing, there's definitely some other opportunities out there. Like Heritage Glen Hemisphere has something like this. Freedom Express has their own little version of something like this that's tweaked a little bit differently. And of course, in the world of stick and tins, if you're looking to stay a little more budget sensitive, there's a bunch of those. And I'll also leave you some links uh, down there to check out the other videos I've done with other people who have some similar layouts to this one. But again, overall, let me know where you think they nailed it. Let me know where you think they failed it and everything in between. Anything you're willing to share, I'm willing to try to listen uh, w within reason, of course. You tell me the location of Jimmy Hoffa's body, I'm going to have to report that. Short of that, though, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Hoffa hunting, everyone. I don't know. Bye.